Good evening and welcome to InfoWars Nightly News. This is Mike Adams filling in for Alex Jones this evening. It's Friday, December 16th, 2011, and we've got a great show lined up for you. A lot of very important breaking news. Plus, Alex Jones is conducting an interview tonight with the creators of the very important documentary, A Noble Lie. And you can watch that segment here just after the news. Those are interviews with James Lane, the director, and Holland van den Neuenhoff, the key researcher for the film. It's a very important interview, so definitely stay tuned for that. Now, getting to the news, the National Defense Authorization Act, the NDAA. It looks like Obama is poised to sign that bill, which of course shreds the Bill of Rights and eviscerates the U.S. Constitution. Now, Obama is the one who said he wouldn't sign the bill, but it turns out that he is in fact the very person who requested that specific sections of the bill pertain to Americans so that Americans could be arrested, they could be interrogated they could be, quote, disappeared, never to be heard from again. And in fact, Glenn Greenwald from Salon wrote about the three myths of this bill. You see a lot of people out there arguing about this and saying it does not apply to American citizens or it does not codify indefinite detention, but in fact, it does. If you read the bill, here are the words on screen for you, that it does detain Americans until the end of hostilities. The second myth, clarifies that it does expand the scope of the war on terror as defined in previous law. The third myth is that it doesn't apply to Americans and once again this article clarifies that it does indeed apply to Americans. So there's no question, there's no question if you look at the facts and read the bill that this National Defense Authorization Act does now make America the battleground and it makes you the potential enemy. It makes us all, in a sense, enemies of the state. If we are just suspected of being involved with anything related to terrorism, and remember, the US government does not have to produce even a single shred of evidence to prove their accusations against you. This is the definition of tyranny. Now, we shouldn't be surprised that Obama reversed his own word, saying he would veto the bill and now is poised to sign it because he has a long history of lying to us about things he will or will not do. Remember this? Remember when he said he would close Guantanamo? This was one of, of his campaign promises. He said he would crack down on lobbyist influence in Washington. Well, now lobbyists have greater influence than ever before in Washington. Obama also said he would broadcast all the health care negotiations on C-SPAN. And then he went on to have secret negotiations behind closed doors. Yep, private secret meetings to roll out the health care bill. And now, of course, he said he would veto the NDAA, but he is going to sign it. It is now is the moment more than ever that we need to support Ron Paul. He's the only sense the only person who has a sense of sanity and integrity in honoring the Constitution and the Bill of Rights that would protect us from exactly this kind of tyranny that is about to be thrust upon us by Obama and all the senators and members of Congress who signed this atrocious bill. Moving on, we have a very intriguing man on the street segment for you brought to you by Darren McBreen. He interviewed some computer science experts on the streets of Austin. Let's go to that film right now. The House and the Senate have both introduced internet piracy bills that they argue are designed to stop internet theft of intellectual property. But civil rights groups and other critics of the bills are calling these propositions internet kill switches as they would allow the government to shut down the internet or restrict access to certain websites or types of content. Should the bills pass, the internet would be monitored and patrolled by government censors. And the enforcement of libel and copyright infringement of the internet would be yet another step in the direction of a totalitarian state. Have you heard about the internet kill switch? I have heard rumors about an internet kill switch, yes. I think it's just another way for them to try and control what we do. Just placing any sort of restriction on, on the internet is just, I don't think, a good idea because to me, internet is like the great equalizer. It's what gives knowledge to everyone. It gives, what, gives knowledge to the common man. I believe we do need a law, but I believe the law that they're uh, proposing is probably going a little bit too far. If you were to shut down all the communications from people to people, that goes against uh, core American values. Going as far as blocking and stopping search engines, uh, you know, does exceed its bounds. Do you think it's an assault on our First Amendment? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, 
It's publicly controlled, so the government shouldn't have a hand in what we can and what we can't see. It is literally an assault on our free speech. Anything like this where it would be able to shut off parts of, you know, not being able to access Google or Yahoo uh, because you don't, you did something wrong or you didn't pay enough is definitely, I think, an infringement on First Amendment rights. If you were to shut down all telephone lines, if you were to shut down, uh, you know, uh, put a mute on humans in general, that's, 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 a, that's unconstitutional completely. I think it would be abused, yeah. It's hard to know what kind of loopholes they're going to leave in, so what they can shut down uh, with or without permission. You have an internet bill, it's been called the kill switch uh, bill, that uh, would allow the president to seize control or shut down portions yeah. of the internet. Senator Joe Lieberman, he's one of the proponents of the, uh, both of these bills that are being introduced. He went as far as saying he wants to model these bills after the Great Firewall Chinese version. Oh, what do you think about that? Uh, honestly, I think that's, that's probably one of the worst ideas I've ever heard. China goes beyond their way to block anything that they don't see fit. If you look at all the protests going on right now, I mean, obviously the media is a big, you know, outlet for them using the internet and things like that. So if you cut that out, then pretty much, then they have no way to contact other groups, you know, and, and immobilize. I think the American people should have a fear if people are saying this is going to be the next Chinese firewall, then they should be a little worried about what may or may not be censored. Yeah, in Egypt, that's what they did. They, show, they attempted to. Um, fortunately, the power of the people came through and they set up modems, they set up uh, different, different ways to get around it. And that's what, uh, if, if they actually try and do that to us, um, as far as we are technologically in the U.S., they'd have some real trouble on their hands. Everyone needs to realize what's going on and try and do as much as they can to stop it before they take it away. So if you value your internet freedom and you don't want the web in the United States to be transformed into an imitation of the censored and policed Chinese version of the internet, call your congressman, call the Senate, and demand that they vote against the internet kill switch. I'm Darren McBreen for InfoWars Nightly News. That was a really great segment there by Darren McBreen. Thank you, Darren, for bringing us that. Extremely informative and very important because, of course, if they have this internet kill switch in place, it will allow them to seize control of sites like InfoWars, which is, of course, the way you're getting the truth that the mainstream media won't report. So definitely take action to help stop this bill before it becomes law. Now, moving on, the FBI has been caught lying about its attempt to acquire tracking phone monitoring software from a firm called Carrier IQ. It turns out that FBI Director Robert Mueller, he had assured Congress that agents, quote, neither sought nor obtained any information from Carrier IQ. But Andrew Coward, the vice president, yes, that's his name, Andrew Coward, vice president of marketing for Carrier IQ, then came forward and told the Associated Press that the FBI had indeed contacted them about their technology. The software is called IQ Agent, and it tracks all, everything that you do with your smartphone. It tracks keystrokes and the messages that you send, and it logs them in the phone. No wonder the FBI was interested in acquiring this software. And isn't it interesting that the FBI lies about its involvement in masterminding terror plots, even while it, at the same time, is lying about its attempts to acquire tracking software so that it can keep its eyes on you, even though you, the American people, generally don't keep your eyes on what the FBI is doing behind closed doors. How's that for a living contradiction right there? Moving on, the Washington Times declares that the gun-running operation Fast and Furious is Obama's Watergate. Now, of course, this term was probably borrowed from InfoWars. Alex Jones himself has referred to this as Watergate of the modern era. It turns out that Border Patrol agents are being murdered by the very weapons that Attorney General Eric Holder allowed to be shipped and smuggled into Mexico. This was part of Operation Fast and Furious, which has now been exposed as a scheme to destroy the Second Amendment by creating fear and creating violence. Mr. Holder clearly knew about Fast and Furious, reports the Washington Times, and did nothing to stop it. This is because the administration wanted to use the excuse of increased violence on the border and weapons smuggling into Mexico to justify tighter gun control legislation. Mr. Holder is fighting ferociously to prevent important internal justice documents from falling into the hands of congressional investigators. They go on to report, it is the full nature of his, if the full nature of his involvement is discovered, the Obama presidency will be in peril. Yes, that's because who knows how high this goes up the ladder of power in Washington. Maybe Eric Holder isn't where this thing ends. And of course, wasn't it just a few days ago 
right here on InfoWars that Ron Paul suggested in an interview with Alex Jones that Eric Holder should be fired and investigated for possible criminal violations. Well, if that happens, it would be interesting indeed to see how high that criminality runs in Washington, D.C. Now, moving on, the growing menace of domestic drones is upon us. We now have drones that are flying over and watching what we do even when we're not breaking the law. These drones, in fact, have now been used to menace ranchers in, was it North Dakota? Yes. The Los Angeles Times reported yesterday that local police in North Dakota use a Predator B drone. This is a military class drone developed for the military to locate people and arrest them for refusing to turn over some cattle that had wandered onto their land. Now, I've got to ask here, you see some of the quotes on, on screen there, the, the suspects had refused to turn over the cattle and then, and then the drones came after them so that they were located and then arrested. If these drones can watch you and your cattle, then they could also watch you and your garden. Maybe you're growing a secret garden in the backyard and they're going to use these drones to now locate your secret garden. And I'm not talking about a garden of marijuana. I'm talking about growing heirloom vegetables like Julie Bass tried to do in Michigan. And then having drones spot that and report you to local food police that shut down your garden. That's, that's a possible scenario coming in our near future as these drones continue to be rolled out. Now continuing with the drones. Oh, another point on that, sorry, I wanted to in include this note on the drones, is that the drones have, uh, n not exactly military drones, but other flying aircraft, DHS airplanes, were used recently to murder 73 civilians in Jamaica. And this is what I call a flying robo-massacre of innocent people. So, if they could be used to kill people in Jamaica, they could certainly be used to conduct a massacre in the United States of America as well. Now, Iranian engineers claim that they were able to bring down a drone that was flying over them and, of course, gathering intelligence over Iran in preparation for what looks like it's going to be war over there. But this engineer claims that they essentially hacked the drone using false GPS signals that then encouraged the drone to land right there in Iran. They didn't even have to shoot it down. Here's the quote. With spoofing, an adversary provides fake GPS signals. This convinces the GPS receiver that it is located in the wrong place or time. Remarkably, spoofing can be accomplished without having much knowledge about electronics, computers, or GPS itself. Yeah, isn't that amazing? So now, let's see, whatever we send over Iran that's unmanned, they can just make it land on their own airstrips, and then they've got drones that they can take apart and study and perhaps model to make their own drones, send them over the United States <laughs> or other countries. Oh man, worse yet for U.S. forces, here's another quote from the raw story. It's an exploit the Iranians reportedly learned after reverse engineering other drones that they shot down, gaining a key bit of leverage against not just drones, but virtually any U.S. military hardware that depends on the same easily exploited signals. This, this is very concerning because it means that the billions that we are spending on our military, what are they doing with this money? Are they buying off-the-shelf hardware from Radio Shack and putting it in these drones and then launching it over Iran just to be hacked by some garage electronics engineers who are able to broadcast fake GPS signals? That doesn't seem right. I think somebody's being overcharged for this hardware, and I think, I think it's the taxpayers. What do you think? All right, I wanted to get this story in. This is about, speaking of, of technology and weapons, this is about a new weapon that will suffocate protesters with low-frequency speakers. We call it the Darth Vader death grip weapon. Activist Post is reporting this. It's a crowd control, control tool that uses sound waves, and it's, it comes out of a Raytheon patent. It's a new type of, quote, riot shield, they say, that creates a pulse pressure wave that resonates the upper respiratory tract of a human, hindering breathing and eventually incapacitating the target. And we were talking about this in the studio here and saying it would also prevent you from screaming. Yes, indeed. If you can't breathe, uh, you can't scream. So that way, the people with the video cameras trying to get video to send to InfoWars about these protests 
You can't even get people screaming on video any, anymore. They're all incapacitated by this Darth Vader weapon. Isn't it interesting that the police state that we're now living in is resorting to weapons that really are just like the dark evil forces coming out of Star Wars? I mean, it's, it's, it's a little funny, but quite sad and pathetic, a bit horrifying as well. Let's hope they don't try to use that on us anytime soon. Non-lethal weapons. Who knows what they're going to do with these. Okay. Republican Tea Party diva Bachman attacks Ron Paul. In the latest debate, Bachman said that Ron Paul is going to put us in danger. Why? Because he doesn't want to attack, uh, attack Iran. And she said that we got to go after Iran because if we don't, one of our cities could, could blow up. I'm paraphrasing, of course. Let's get to the exact quote out of the story. The fabrication that Iran will nuke Israel is gleaned from a mistranslation of an Ahmadinejad speech. In fact, Ahmadinejad said the regime occupying the holy city of Jerusalem will, quote, vanish from the page of times. He did not say that Iran will wipe Israel off, off the map. He didn't even mention Israel by name. This is from an InfoWars article. But even though, even though he didn't say that, this is the justification for candidates like Bachman to go after Ron Paul for not attacking Iran. Ron Paul just wants to keep us out of these conflicts, bring our troops home, and enforce the Constitution, which requires a congressional declaration of war before we engage in these military acts of aggression against other countries. Hasn't uh, Ron Paul been doing great in the recent debates? Just lighten it up with the truth about freedom and liberty and the Constitution. It's great. Even his opponents are now acknowledging how well Ron Paul is doing in the debates. Now, next, we have Congress overturns incandescent light bulb ban. Yeah, you knew this one was coming. They were pushing for it. The Republicans in Congress were trying to reverse this ban that was passed in 2007. They struck a new deal Thursday that overturns these rules that were going to go into effect next year. And this was part of a 1,200-page, $915 billion spending bill that is going to be signed into law very soon. They have to sign the spending bill, so they just sort of inserted this light bulb uh, ban reversal bill or language inside that bill. So now, hey, we get our lights back. Isn't that, isn't that great? Uh, for all of you who have been hoarding light bulbs, you can, now, you can now relax. You'll be able to buy them a little bit longer. And as one of the crew members here, hey, we may even have a little bit of light left by which to read the remaining shreds of the Bill of Rights, if all this continues. Here's some natural news articles, by the way, about compact fluorescent lights. We wrote about this last year and how even CFLs are loaded with mercury. So this whole effort to try to push compact fluorescent lights on us as energy efficiency, well, this was rooted in a kind of contamination agenda for our environment anyway. You can read a lot more about that at naturalnews.com, where I serve as the editor when I'm not here having fun with the crew at InfoWars Nightly News. It is crazy sometimes, some of the stories that we see coming across our desks, and we all have to laugh about it before and after the tapings of these, these shows. So, continuing now, we have Internet Architects Oppose U.S. Online Piracy Bills. This is a big deal. Eighty experts who have spoken out about the dangers of the Stop Online Piracy Act, the SOPA, 80 different experts have given an open letter to Congress. These are engineers, inventors, and software developers. And in this letter, they express concern about the bills introduced in the Senate and the House of Representatives. In fact, everybody who understands the basic fundamentals of liberty is against this. But guess who's for the bill? Of course, Hollywood. Yes, and the music industry and the Chamber of Commerce. They want this internet kill switch so that if you're accused of any kind of piracy, even linking to a site that's engaged in piracy, the U.S. government can seize your web domain. They can take down your entire server, take you offline without due process. Isn't that interesting that so much is happening in America today now without due process? Just as the NDAA wants to strip away due process from you, the individual, Strip away your right to a trial by jury, your right to face your accuser, your right to even know what you're being charged with. This SOPA wants to take away the rights of websites to exist on the internet and to fight any kind of censorship attempt with due process. I guess due process is no longer trendy in America these days, huh? That's a sad commentary on the situation, but all right, moving on. California regulators are now committing acts of economic sabotage in my opinion, against organic pastures. 
Now here's what they did. Now Organic Pastures, you, you may remember, is led by Mark McAfee, and he was outspoken against the raids, the armed raids on raw some foods, where they sold organic milk and raw milk and raw cheese and watermelons and other foods like that. But now the state of California is apparently setting up organic pastures. They've shut them down for many weeks, cost them who knows how much money, maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars as an estimate. But they claimed that organic pastures milk was sickening children in California with E. coli. Well, it turns out that when this milk was tested, there was no E. coli in the milk whatsoever. So it was another kind of false flag attack on the raw milk industry targeting organic pastures and Mark McAfee with this act of economic sabotage, or you might call it state-sponsored economic terrorism conducted by the state of California as payback. Yeah, payback against these people that stand up for raw milk as a real food in California. Can you believe that's happening these days? It's economic terrorism funded by the state of California. Unbelievable. Now moving on. Have you seen those pink Bibles for sale? Well, it turns out that some of the money from these pink Bibles goes to none other than the Susan G. Komen for the Cure organization that then hands over a portion of this money to Planned Parenthood. That's right. It goes from the Bible to Komen to Planned Parenthood. So if you're out there buying these pink Bibles, watch out. It turns out that the Lifeway Christian Resources Organization, which is in fact part of the Southern Baptist Convention, they've now stopped selling the pink Bibles as this information went public. Now in their defense, they did say that this money from Komen was only used by Planned Parenthood to conduct mammograms. Well, even if that's true, and who, who knows, maybe they're lying to us about that, but even if that's true, Mammograms cause breast cancer, folks. Mammograms irradiate your breasts and your heart tissue. And if you get enough mammograms over time, you will get breast cancer sooner or later because that's what radiation does to your DNA. It causes mutations that lead to cancer. I can't believe that they would use Bibles or the sales of Bibles to promote procedures that give women cancer or possibly fund abortions in America. Absolutely ridiculous. Now, moving on, after Pink Bibles, we have some good news that is, has taken place. We have a man in, uh, what city is this in? The ex-con in Detroit, I believe. He found a wallet with $1,000 of cash in it, and he returned it to its rightful owner. Yes, indeed, inside the wallet, reports My Fox Detroit, was enough cash to tempt even the most honest person. A thousand bucks in cash credit cards and a man's identification and he turned it in and gave it back to its rightful owner. That's good news about honest citizens in America, especially in contrast to people like John Corzine, who found a few billion dollars in cash and customer accounts and decided to steal it for himself. Yeah, you got a guy just out of jail that's given the money back and yet you have these wealthy globalists who are stealing billions and so far getting away with it. It's incredible. Now, that's it for the news wrap for tonight, but stay tuned because we have just an extraordinary interview coming up with the creators of A Noble Lie. This is the documentary that you'll want to see, available right here from the InfoWars store. Alex Jones interviews these creators in the segment coming up next, but first I've got one more item for you here. I have written a commentary, an editorial, about the NDAA. I felt so strongly about this, and I wanted to bring you this special commentary and now we don't use teleprompters here on InfoWars Nightly News, so I'm going to be reading this to you on paper. This is word for word exactly as I wanted you to hear it, so please bear with me as I bring you this editorial. This, I hope you will agree it's a strong commentary against those who would support this NDAA. And here it is. With the passage of the National Defense Authorization Act, America has set a dark course down a path that can only lead to its downfall. Absent the natural law rights granted to the people by our Creator, and now subjected to secret military kidnappings, detainment, torture, and assassinations by our own government, we the people are seen only as subservient assets to a system of such moral and financial corruption that it screams out for abolishment. If we are judged by the government we keep, then in the passage of this NDAA we have failed at our most fundamental task to refresh the tree of liberty from time to time. 
not with the blood of patriots and tyrants, but with the wisdom and the foresight to avoid such bloodshed. This moral failure will haunt us for years to come, and it will curse upon the hands of those who stood silently and said nothing the blood of their fellow Americans who will die at the hands of the tyrants, emboldened and empowered by the wickedness of this NDAA. Those who voted for it and who signed it have now placed a spiritual debt upon their souls, not merely for their conscious betrayal of the people, but for their contempt for the divine creator from which these natural law rights eternally spring. Even in a violent popular uprising, the theoretical act of sentencing these tyrants to death and carrying out those sentences in the name of justice pales in comparison to the judgment awaiting them beyond this life. In this outrageous act of betrayal, they are unleashing shockwaves of evil, rippling, tearing through the fabric of our nation and through our hearts. They have betrayed us. They have sold us down the road of tyranny. And they absolutely will not stop until and unless we make them stop. Tonight, I pray that Americans shall find the courage and the self-worth to reject this betrayal of our fundamental freedoms, and I pray that we the people grant these ignorant lawmakers who would so carelessly unleash this tyranny upon us all a unique opportunity to reconsider their actions in isolation, away from society, behind bars. At this dawn of a new era of history in America, prison time is perhaps the most merciful option we can possibly grant these traitors. May God have mercy upon their souls, and may the people abandon any thoughts of violent vengeance and instead find it in their hearts to respect the rule of law, even against those who refuse to. Today, we follow in the footsteps of great men who gave us a framework for liberty and an imperfect system, but a workable system for justice. May our own footsteps follow gently in their shadows, and may they lead us to the wisdom to find our way through the storm of tyranny and into the light of liberty. This is Mike Adams for InfoWars Nightly News. Now stay tuned, we're going to go to break, and when we come back, we'll be joined by Alex Jones with a special interview with the creators, the producers of this film right here, A Noble Lie, Oklahoma City, 1995. Oh yeah, we've got specials for you, of course. Get all 18 films, which I have done. Those are on special at the InfoWars store. We've also got the Patriot Yearly Subscription Offer, 44% off, just $39.95. This is, the, this is the fuel that fuels the InfoWars machine here. We need your support, especially in this dark hour of America. We need your support, so please check out those subscri subscriptions that are now available at a discount that you don't normally see. So check those, those out online at InfoWars.com. Please find it in your own hearts and minds to support this effort here, as I am doing. We need your support. We, this is a desperate hour for America, and if we don't rise up now, if we don't get smart and continue to inform others, we may lose this republic. Now, stay tuned with us here. After this break, we'll come back with Alex Jones and the interview with the creators of this film, A Noble Lie. Thank you. What's up with these sorry politicians? Lots of bark. When it's showtime, whimpering like little shih tzus. You want big cuts. Lon Paul's been screaming it for years. Budget crisis, no problem. Got a trillion bucks year one. That's trillion with a T. Department of Education, gone. Interior, energy, HUD, commerce, gone. Later bureaucrats, that's how Ron Paul rolls. Want to drain the swamp? Ron Paul, do it. I'm Ron Paul, and I approve this message. If you believe in this information and want to support its viral spread, go to the InfoWars store at InfoWars.com. We've got the new G.I. Joe InfoWars t-shirts. We've got the incredible ProPure gravity-fed filters available at InfoWars.com in the store. We've got a new DVD, Sign Us Under Attack, the Don't Tread on Me flag. We've got all sorts of different bumper stickers to help spread the rebellion virally. It's all there, wristbands, citizen rule books in every order. Order online at InfoWars.com today. The water filters, the canteens, it's all there, InfoWars.com. Welcome back to InfoWars Nightly News. I want to thank Mike Adams for doing the news portion of the broadcast tonight and also tell the 
uh, on the street crew, uh, Rob Jacobson and Darren McBreen, great job for that in-depth report on what's happening with the open attack on free speech and the internet kill switch, where 80 top inventors of the internet, mainstream media admits, have come out and said this is the end of the internet as we know it. A worldwide takeover is what this bill is engaged in that, that ties in as a nexus point to this new secret world copyright treaty, uh, which Obama has kept secret for two years but uh, leaked in the last 12 months. Just incredible things are happening. NDAA to have the military on the streets of America and secretly arrest citizens. And Obama saying he's going to sign it. Uh, you've got uh, all the attacks on whole food producers and raw milk and Amish and uh, farmers markets. You've got the attack on free speech. Uh, you've got all the creepy big sis announcements of telescreens on the highways and the shopping malls saying don't trust your neighbors. Uh, TSA now showing up in malls and sports stadiums and highway checkpoints. It's because the banking cartel created a global Ponzi scheme and now plans to basically, through politicians they bought and paid for, sign the public onto that debt and bring us into a new dark age, a post-industrial system they call the New World Order. It's all here. And so our job is easier than ever right now to wake people up and to get people angry and taking action politically. But soon, if this continues, they're going to launch new regional wars, stage terror attacks, blame it on domestic groups, uh, and engage in all sorts of other economic uh, warfare and economic terrorism against the population to bring in full, hot, authoritarian tyranny. Um, of course, that's the solution of the crises that they've created. So we're at that nexus point. Use the Internet. Use the tools we've got, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Infowars.com, the films that are out there now like never before while we're still able to communicate because they're wanting to shut this down and have a selective kill switch because we're hurting them and the system knows it. Now, I've interviewed James Lane on the radio before and then also um, today again on the radio. And uh, I had uh, the uh, uh, Chris Emery, the producer of the film, on it, and they covered a lot of great information. And Holland uh, Van Den Neuenhoff has been uh, obviously here at the office before. Uh, whenever uh, he shot the new film, A Noble Lie, Oklahoma City, 1995. And so he's going to join us here today. He's the writer and researcher for the film. This is the only modern film in the last decade since the 16-year-old tragedy in Oklahoma City at the Alfred P. Murrow Building, the only modern film and the most professional ever made. And it's got many of the victims, many of the eyewitnesses in it. Uh, it really is uh, an incredible achievement, and it's so important now because as we know, those that don't know history are doomed to repeat it. It's so critical right now that we understand that they're gearing up to stage these events again. And they're so arrogant, they've had all these top globalists you know, basically bragging and saying a new Oklahoma City will help us get our agenda through. In the Financial Times of London, you name it, it's super creepy. And so I want to encourage everybody to support the filmmakers, also the InfoWars operation. But more importantly, get a tool to wake up others and to show your friends and family and to go to InfoWars.com and get it. Because if you order by Sunday night, we can guarantee it can be shipped out to you before Christmas. So InfoWars.com or 888-253-3139. And then have viewing parties. Show it to your friends and family so that they understand false flag terror. Because if we expose that system, we checkmate the globalists where they cannot continue these Reichstagian uh, self-inflicted wound operations. So again, James Lane, uh, who is the director, and Holland uh, Vanden Neuhoff um, join us to break this down. And Holland, every time I get you on, I butcher your cool name. Did I get it right the second time? Uh, uh, the first time you got it right, it's Vanden Neuhoff. <laughs> All right, Vanden Neuhoff. So easy when you hear it. I can mm -hmm. barely say Jones. Uh, good to have you here with us, gentlemen. You spent two years making the film. Briefly, uh, Holland... Break down what you think is so powerful about the film and why it's so important. And then let's launch into, because I, I got into the question today, who do we know is involved at the highest levels in the cover-up and in the bombing itself? And what are some of the other key points we didn't cover on the radio? 
Well, what's unique about this film is that we were able to compile the, the, the amazing trail of evidence compiled by independent investigators, police officers, and so forth, and the Oklahoma Bombing Investigation Committee over the past 16 years, package it, and show it to the American people, because all of this information, ha most of it has been reported before, but the mainstream media just won't cover it. Also, we've been able to break new ground with our own investigation. This was half movie making, half investigation. We've talked to witnesses who have never exposed themselves before, who have never talked to the public or put their name out there before to expose this information about the bombing. One thing that we try to do in this movie, Alex, is uh, actually boil it down to the most provable essence. Uh, you know, if not, it would have been a 10-hour movie. Uh, this is going to be the last time that, uh, you know, people are going to be able to hear the actual witness, eyewitness testimony of people that were actually in that building. They said this is the last time they're going to do an interview. We just want a one cohesive package that, it, that encapsulates the entire event. If you know everything about the bombing or nothing, you're going to walk away with something new from this uh, because we, we cover the information that was garnered by the Oklahoma Bombing Investigation Committee. Uh, we cover the official story and then we deconstruct it. Then we get into some of the newer information that folks like Jesse Trinidou, who we've had on the show before, uh, that the information that they've uncovered most recently through FOIA requests and uh, lawsuits that he's done against uh, the FBI and the DOJ. James and then Holland crystallize in two minutes each the key evidence of Oklahoma City and the motive. Well, what we can demonstrate is that uh, the Ryder truck bomb, for one, was not the sole cause of destruction to the Murrah building, that there were other people also involved who assisted McVeigh, and these people were ignored by the U.S. government, that some of these people were U.S. government informants. We have the paper and named them by name. We named some of the agents involved. We named some of the government figures involved. Terry Nichols, in prison, gave an affidavit, and he has nothing to, to gain by lying about his role. He is suffering under two life sentences. He's never leaving in jail. He named Larry Potts. Tim McVeigh had told him that Larry Potts, assistant director of the FBI, was in charge of the operation, operation that, that uh, culminated in the Oklahoma City bombing. Louis Free, head of the FBI, is now retired and now in charge of the Penn State investigation, the child abuse scandal going on there, so we can be assured that truth and justice not, will not be achieved in that matter, as it was not achieved in Oklahoma City. The victims here we have shown this movie to the people involved, people who are in the building. They approve of our endeavors. They know. They want the story out. We were lied to about every aspect of the bombing, top to bottom. What is amazing is that they were able to get away with it and that the mainstream media did not cover all of these points in a cohesive package. So the American people can see, can see it and say that this is a lie and why is it happening? This can all be... You know, erase all our doubts erased by releasing the security videotapes that surround the Murrah building that showed exactly what happened, who drove that truck, what exactly happened at the building. Sixteen years later, they say they don't have them or they're lost or that the tapes they have released, they're all having their tapes changed at the same time, 9.02 a.m., which is ridiculous. The official story and its excuses are very implausible. And if they, once the American people see this, they'll come to understand the true nature of terrorism and question everything that their government says from now on. Absolutely. And then, you know, they say that the, the primary explosive was ammonium nitrate and fuel oil that was in the Ryder truck that day. We've got eyewitness testimony from the survivors of that building. I mean, who are you going to believe? The, the people that were actually there or the people that are trying to push the official story? They said that the building was coming down eight to ten seconds before the truck bomb went off. They thought it was an earthquake. They had enough time to get under their desk before the glass blew in. According to the FEMA report, that blast wave from the truck was moving at 1,300 feet per second. The story just doesn't hold water, according to the, the people that were actually there. Uh, when you add that with the fact that we've got uh, Brigadier uh, General Parton who does an analysis of the, the bombing showing where the additional ordnance would have been placed. You've got Dr. Samuel Cohen, the inventor of the neutron bomb, saying that it would be against the laws of physics, no matter how much ammonium nitrate and fuel oil was used, to bring that building down. We've got a report from Eglin Air Force Base where they constructed a single larger explosive, set it off to a, next to a weaker structure, and it did less damage. It was their conclusion that there had to be additional ordnance inside the building. Uh, we've got Officer Terrence Shakey, real hero that day, saved eight people's lives, but he was on the scene within minutes. One of the hallmarks of an ammonium nitrate and fuel oil bomb is a nitric gas cloud, it, it, be it in Ireland, be it 41 years ago at Sterling Hall, where the ammonium nitrate bo uh, bomb was set off. They, the first 26 responders were hospitalized from the inhalation of nitric gas. That did not happen, and Terry Yakey saving people from the building that day within minutes proves that there was no nitric gas cloud. All right, I want to add a key piece of evidence here, and, and uh, Holland, you, you started to get into it. Not one, not two, but three different high-level FBI agents, including Larry Potts, the deputy director, head of counterterrorism, said he was in Dallas 
took a Southwest Airlines flight. Even mainstream media said there were no flights going in that day at that time. Then he said, oh, I drove. This is a guy caught like in a movie. Oh, I did this, I did that. Hotel receipts of him the day before, which people need to look into because he'd been seen. So right there, we know they're on the ground. It fits into what McVeigh and others had said they, they needed to go after the state's rights movement that was centered around Oklahoma. They needed to demonize the growing militia movement. Uh, they needed to kind of cover up what had happened at Waco uh, with the flare footage and the killing there that was coming out in Congress right at that time. Bill Clinton told USA Today on Air Force One right after being elected, he said, I owe my re-election to Oklahoma City. And now their advisors today, we covered on the radio. Uh, there's a whole bunch of them, perhaps you can talk to this, uh, are saying we need a new Oklahoma City to blame domestic groups. I mean, that's how dumb they think we are, and we're right up to the same point. And, and, and talk about pots, but then I want to expand into Eric Holder, who was involved in the cover-up. We've got his emails, thanks to the lawsuits with Jesse Trinidad and others, getting the information through Foyer. But we have Holder running a false flag with tens of thousands of guns into Mexico and drugs back into the U.S. That's now all confirmed. We knew it back in back in January of this year. I mean, this is big medicine. This is big news. If they'd ship thousands of guns into Mexico and kill hundreds, why wouldn't they stage this? I mean, it shows, and then the memos, ABC, CBS got them, where they said, we're gonna do this to blame the Second Amendment. There's a false flag confirmed. Exactly. Operation Fast and Furious is making the headlines right now where it shows that the ATF is documented, along with the FBI, with shipping guns to Mexico. That, that has killed thousands of people. And Eric Holder, the Attorney General of the United States, responsible for enforcing the laws of the land back in 1995, he was in charge of the FBI investigation, the Department of Justice investigation, into the Oklahoma City bombing, and in charge of the cover-up of the murder of Kenneth Trentadu in federal custody. We have his emails where he talks about the Trentadus and Trentadons on how to cover up the story, and the Trentadu story led directly to Oklahoma City. So what you have in the headlines now is Holder implicated right now in a false flag operation that killed thousands, that has killed thousands of people. Yeah, you're right. Let me stop you, because the Mexican government and the U.S. admit over 2,000. You're right. It's not hundreds. It's thousands. And it's at least six cops and Border Patrol on our side. Please continue. So we have him implicated in, in what is now being reported in the mainstream media as a legitimately a false flag operation. Holder, back in 1995, was in charge of another false flag operation, the Oklahoma City bombing. This is why this movie is so timely. We're showing that it's a continual pattern, and if these people are not held accountable for their crimes, they rise up in power and they, they commit even greater crimes. Every time the body count goes up, you know, that's why we have to hold them accountable. And the, this movie is going to be a tool because it's so easy to poke holes through the official story of the Oklahoma City bombing. You know, uh, they've gotten a little more sophisticated, you know, more recently. But uh, the, the, the Oklahoma City bombing story is just so easy to disprove. And the American people haven't seen it in this platform just destroyed from top to bottom. It holds absolutely no water. And what we can conclusively prove with this movie, at the very least, is that the official story is a lie. All right, well, I want to give you guys about a 95 on film review. And I think I can only give one of my films a 95. I mean, I want to be honest with folks uh, here reviewing the film that the information is five stars, 100%. Uh, the quality of the high-def footage has never before been seen. You know, we got the original TV tapes. Everybody just had grainy stuff. Uh, the interviews you got with survivors, all these people, amazing. A few, uh, there's a few areas, and this happens in my films, where it's on-the-fly interviews, the audio's a little hot or a little low. But overall, for your first film, uh, I mean, it's just incredible, and it shows the passion that you guys brought to this. I mean, this is really a powerful film. And I know a lot of... Uh, you know, uh, people uh, out there with a lot of influence watch this show, listen to this show. Listen, none of us are safe if we don't expose this. And, and so, 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 I mean, I just want to say people should get the film. I mean, it's not going to film festivals. It's not going through that whole route. It's right to the public, and it's up to the people for a noble lie uh, to have the effect it should. I mean, if this got seen 35 million times for free online, I know so soon it's going to come out online. Uh, like Obama deception has had, imagine how this would hurt the globalists because their secret weapon is false flag. It is their go-to zeitgeist. We've got to take that weapon away from them. 
Exactly. And what this movie does is it shows the, the methodology of state-sponsored terror. You know, at the time of the Oklahoma City bombing, there was a patriot movement in this country. People were talking about a restoration of the Constitution, the expansion of the police state powers. They were resisting the anti-terrorism legislation that was trying to be passed. Uh, after the Oklahoma City bombing, it completely silenced anybody that uh, opposed the globalization agenda. You know, uh, even to this day, if you, uh, you know, oppose the expansion of government power, you're a McVeigh. They used, they, they love to throw that term out. And then about the time the, the Patriot Movement started to get renewed, we had 9-11, same, same pattern. It shows, uh, it was a pre, Oklahoma City was a precursor to 9-11. I mean, after the event, the Patriot Act passed, you know, everybody was begging, you know, to have their, their, their freedoms taken away. Prior to 9-11, they never would have accepted it. And now we have a, a new Patriot Movement moving in this country and exposing these events is going to take away their false flag power because, I mean, just like Kurt Haskell, where, I mean, he said that he wanted to make sure that uh, the underwear bomber uh, case was exposed because he knew there was something wrong with 9-11. This shows that people in this movement are having an effect and we are taking the tools away from the, the, the New World Order and not allowing them to, to murder people and ride our ashes to uh, their own political ends. Uh, let's, uh, Holland, let's get more into your list there from your research because you guys are there in Oklahoma. You know, some members of your team over a decade just obsessed with this because you should be. It's a mass murder and the government did it. My God, this is this is incredible. Uh, and it's incredible how they've used it undoubtedly to take our liberties and write public memos about how wonderful it was. That's their total arrogance at us because they know the public's naive. It's time to stop being children and admit this. Let's go over some more of the nasty people uh, who were red-handed there, part of the operation. I mean, I mean, you've got the governor's brother. What about him publishing a book before the thing where a, what, a, a Tom McVeigh is part of the secret circle or whatever and blows it up? I mean, this is incredible. Some of these facts are just so amazing that they wouldn't even pass the plausibility test in a fiction story. We have the brother of the Oklahoma governor at the time of the bombing, Frank Keating, his brother Martin Keating, who is a self-admitted uh, insider in military intelligence, writes a book called Final Jihad. According to the publisher, this book was written in 1992. This is about the time, mind you, that t uh, t uh, McVeigh was being recruited for uh, secret government activities out of the army, according to his own admission. Martin Keating writes a book called Final Jihad, which features a character named Ted McVeigh, who tries to bomb a federal building in Oklahoma City, a plot that is foiled by a state trooper. Now we take that fiction, that so-called fiction, we look at the reality that was presented to us the day of the bombing, is that McVeigh gets arrested after the bombing in Oklahoma by a state trooper. Now, this obviously is not a coincidence, and then no one can defend that. Obviously, there was inside knowledge on the part of the governor's office. We have talked to people who have traced a call from the governor's office to Walter Reed Army Hospital. By the way, let me stop you. It did come, they wrote it in 92, came out in like 94. And yes. what's weird is after I made a big deal about this like eight years ago on Wikipedia and on, um, but I own a copy. There's one here in the office. I just happened to mention this as a factoid. Because so I have the one published in in '94. They come back out with it and say original publishing date 1996. I mean that shows again that what they're doing. It's so amazing that even on Amazon they changed the date. Well, they always tried to to you know cover their tracks, and that you know that was something that we saw here in the uh, the Oklahoma City case is you know the early hours the the truth always comes out in the media. It's within within hours they get control of the story and start pushing you know whatever cover up they're going to to perpetrate. In Oklahoma, only one news station maintained any integrity for a few months, which was Channel Four, and uh, then the New York Times came in, bought bought the local news station, fired the program director and the lead reporter, and then any uh, information that contradicted the official story was. Completely silenced. The local media tried to do a good job here, and we could see firsthand how the feds came in, how the New York Times came in, and squashed all independent inquiry into the bombing. Channel 4 was interviewing John Doe number two witnesses, talking about what the tapes really showed, talking about the second bombs, talking about accomplices. Then all of a sudden, it was just shut down. And let's expand on that. Well, Channel 4 started basically the original inquiry into the bombing. The first questions raised were why the office of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms in the building was empty. The ATF, which had started the Branch Davidian raid two years before to the day, was the supposed target of the attack, but their office is empty. One of the men who, res who responded to the bombing who was trying to look for his wife, he talked to an ATF agent who told him that they had been paged, notified by their pagers, <coughs> to not come in to work that day. Well, that's that right, and Terrence Yankee and some of the daughters involved said within a minute after it happened they were in full gear demanding patch me up i was up in there and they're like no you weren't 
Terrence Yakey and Dr. Plumley were asking questions about when they showed up, why there were certain federal officials there on site. FBI officials, too. The FBI headquarters is several miles away. There were people there already, and yet Terrence Yakey was four blocks away. He was the first person to respond. A lot of questions raised. We show in this movie that the ATF story about what they were doing in that building is a lie we name. An and they practiced months before in New Mexico blowing up a rider truck. I mean, there is no end to these people. I mean, there is really no end to how evil they are. My Operation God, to, yeah. it, it is just unspeakably wicked. But, but, you know, talking about the censorship, buying up that TV station... And, and everything else that we saw, and changing the publishing date on this book, that just shows you how scared they are of info. This info didn't have power. If, if the global terrorists, the social engineers, were invincible, they wouldn't care. The fact well, that, I, I mean, seeing now military on the streets, checkpoints, going to arrest citizens, training that Oklahoma City investigators, including state reps, are terrorists, we, you, you get the manuals. I mean, it looks cartoonish, because it's so over the top, but it's really happening. But you look at Hitler, Stalin, Mao, that looks cartoonish. Why'd they put up with it? Well, it's the authorities. So, so I mean, seeing everything happen today as it all comes true, this just adds to the urgency. Uh, your views on that? Well, it's, it's very uh, timely because as we talk about the NDAA bill passing with the indefinite detention of American citizens without trial, even if they're found innocent, you say, well, okay, who are they going to round up? Through Operation Defuse, documents, internal fusion center documents were leaked to us that show okbombing.net, which was a uh, website originally ran by the Oklahoma Bombing Investigation Committee, a state representative, Charles Key, is listed under domestic terrorism. I mean, this shows the people that they want to round up because – these institutions' primary goal above anything else is self-preservation, and they have to silence anybody that has the audacity to expose the crimes of the global oligarchy. By the way, we've, we've talked to investigative journalists, Wayne Madsen and others, who've talked to high-level federal informants, Judge Roll, and I've seen other connections um, showing this, Judge Roll who got shot in the Gifford situation, and I heard this at the time, I was like, no, that, you know, that was about a gun running thing and he was going to expose it, was meeting with her secretly in kind of a transpartisan deal. But now there's evidence that that was really a hit uh, to basically cover up what was happening. But I mean, there it is. Just six, eight months ago, they were saying it's a conspiracy theory. We didn't ship guns into Mexico. We only watched them at gun shops. Then it turned out they ordered them to do it. That was just a cover to blame the Second Amendment. They were really shipping 18 wheelers of guns in, cocaine back in. And now it's all there. New York Times, El Paso Times, Chicago Tribune, we've all covered it here in probably 15 reports. Well, I mean, you see how the media is, is controlled this way. The same week we released our movie, Newsweek Magazine, released on its uh, internet organ, The Daily Beast, a, an article that was supposed to be an expose of Operation PACCON in the early 90s. PACCON may have been the genesis of the Oklahoma City bombing. PACCON was an operation the FBI and the ATF undertook to infiltrate every so-called dissident group in the country. Yeah, no, McVeigh was part of that, going to every gun show, the Davidians, every event to, to scope out who they wanted to blame for the attack. But when you look at the Newsweek article when it was finally released, that all mention of Tim McVeigh, Andy Strasmeyer, who we have cited in the Murrah building with bombs, and Operation Pacon have been excised from the final version of the article, and that has been proven because the original article was leaked out. So they are still exercising the cover up here. They do not want they do not want Pacon getting out because that was where where Oklahoma City may have been born because it can prove that they were watching McVeigh, that McVeigh was surrounded by government informants from day one. No, no, exactly. Exactly. They always use a, another operation as the cover umbrella, just like with the 7-7 attack in England. It's admitted the government ran drills of the exact bus, exact trains, attacked at the exact same place at the exact same time. It's something like 20-something trek a gillion. That's exactly. billions of times all the s grains of sand in the world that that would happen. 9-11, every one of these events, so that if other government agencies bust the inner criminal group doing it, they say, oh, it's just a drill like 9-11 with Tripod 2, with Giuliani, the attacks on the towers. Yes, and we actually have uh, a Senate aide that told Charles Key that it was uh, that they had information that this was a sting operation that had gone bad. Well, you look that's at that, like that's like World a, Trade a, Center, where they cook the bomb, train the driver. The informant says you're going to let it go forward. Knows they're setting him up. He records the FBI, Ahmad Salam, saying go ahead and exactly. let it happen. Same deal. He was smart enough though to record him. So we have New York Times, CBS News. Yes, the government allowed it to take place. No, and they didn't happened. allow it to take place. They did it. 
Yeah. And what happens with this is even the, the agents that were not necessarily involved in taking the operation live, they are complicit in the cover up to preserve them, their, the, themselves and their pensions. You know, so it, it gets the whole institution involved in the cover up. Well, we see the mechanism for a false flag operation is that they take an existing operation, they insert a few key personnel, and they turn it to their own ends. The Oakland City bombing was originally supposed to be a big publicity stunt. That that bomb was supposed to explode the early uh, the previous night and destroy an empty building. That's what they were waiting on, a big PR stunt. That's not And that's why McVeigh though. got so mad, we're told, because he didn't want to <clears> kill kids. Exactly. And then once they messed up, and it blew up and killed over 100 people, almost 200 people. Now everyone goes into cover-up mode for what they think is a tremendous foul-up. But it's not. It actually did go along according to the plan, and that's how they get the cover-up installed. It's not like every agent on the street is covering up the fact that the FBI blew up the Murr building. No, it's, it's declassified it's, that Lee Harvey Oswald had a top security clearance at a YouTube base in Japan, was CIA, the documents have now been declassified, and they set him up. And he's like, I'm a patsy, and they're like, you're not going to talk. Boom! with a guy they know's already got cancer. And Jolly and West, McVeigh's doctor's involved with that. Who's in the congressional hearings, folks, I know this sounds crazy, but you gotta look it up yourself, as the number two guy under Ewing Cameron for mind control programs, MK Ultra. I mean, this is, you cannot make up how weird this is. Yeah, and people would question, well, if he was a government agent working, why would he not expose the people that were higher up? And whenever Dr. Jolly West comes on the scene uh, consulting with the defense team, you know, immediately after the bombing, this guy's worked with Saran Saran, Jack Ruby, uh, Patty Hearst, you know, any of the, these big events to, to, you know, and then all of a sudden now they, they're they silent on what happened. You know, I think that's a good possibility as to why McVeigh wasn't talking after the event. And then you see that Dr. Jolly West actually passes the torch to his protege, Wendy Painting uncovered information where uh, his protege John Smith took over with McVeigh. That guy is now in charge of psychology at Guantanamo Bay. Which they admit has another base within it where they do mind control studies. That's even Washington Post. And then they release those guys to become Al-Qaeda leaders leading the Libya attack. Exactly. It's kind of a, the self-perpetuating cycle. They create these zombie killers in these in these uh, mind control camps. What we see at Guantanamo Bay is that there is you have Camp X-ray, and then you what ha you have what the guards call Camp Nowhere, which is a map that's not a camp that's not on the map where the real heavy stuff goes down. So I mean, this well, they admit is, that CIA doctors. Exactly. Right, and they use uh, the 3Ds, dependency, debilitation, and dread. This was pioneered by, you know, you and Cameron and, and Jolly and West. They're using that at Guantanamo Bay, and I think this is probably why they're not interested in old, older so-called Al-Qaeda people being put they in there. They that's want why, kids. That's why it came out again in the Washington Post and in Operation Jawbreaker that they wanted 12-year-old kids in Afghanistan. That's who they mainly were grabbing because they can purely program them, and these are going to be the terrorists they're going to unleash on America. And for those that don't know, there's History Channel specials, even, admitting that Ewing Cameron, Jolly and West's boss, would grab foster children and put them on hallucinogens for a year straight, frying their brain with audio recording who they were and keywords to get food, to stop the dread, putting them on PCP, dancing around in devil outfits, terrorizing five-year-old girls. I mean, th we, this country is run by absolute psychopathic killers. And the government, I mean, it came out in Guantanamo Bay. I'm not even going to say on air what they do to those people. I mean, it is, it is, it is just, it is unbelievable, man. And they're all going to hit us with jihadi attacks. And then they'll come and say, we got to stick our hands down your children's pants because we're fighting Al-Qaeda, who publicly works for them. Exactly. I mean, what we see there is that they, they create the actual problem. This is the false flag attack. They create the actual problem. And if people have a hard, hard time believing that this government or a faction of this government could have pulled off Oklahoma City, look at what the CIA has been doing to countries overseas for decades. Fostering coups, putting in military strongmen that kill thousands of people, doing fake bombings under Operation Gladio in Europe and Italy. The Italian Senate has accused the CIA of, of uh, being involved in the Bologna train bombing station, uh, Bologna train station bombing. No, no, their former president, people. who was the head of, uh, of their intelligence agency at the time, said he was involved in it. And he said 9-11's an inside job. That's the big Italian papers. You're so absolutely when they, right. When they, when they bring that mechanism home to affect change here, why should we be surprised? Like we said, if you don't hold them accountable, they will continue to do their crimes and make them greater. What incentive do they have to stop? None. And the only reason we're still alive is because if they kill us, it highlights everything we've said, exclamation points. They still may do it. But once you understand these are cold-blooded killers who even set up their own agents who are going to bomb an empty building, 
And then McVeigh throws a fit, and we've talked to the witnesses, you know, family and others, lawyers. As you said, he just, I'm not going to blow kids up. Forget this. They're like, they'd already psychologically pegged that he was Dudley Do-Right was going to do that. They were all ready. I mean, they, they're like, because it's run by 170 IQ psycho psychiatrist. This whole thing is run by them. But they've had decades to hone their technique. I mean, MK Ultra started in the 1950s uh, to under, under the 1960s under that name. Then it changed, and it went underground. I mean, they've had decades to and hone their And they profiled McVeigh. They profiled Lee Harvey Oswald. McVeigh's military records from special forces were never released. His psychological records were never released. And what medical records we do have are very disturbing. He was going to the doctor um, at last count, over a hundred times in just three years in the military. That is highly unusual for someone in the combat arms. Highly unusual for someone like McVeigh who claims never have any health problems. He's going to the dentist once a week for over a year, claims he has no dental problems. What is he doing? What is he going under? We don't know, and they have never released all those records in full. In fact, those records on McVeigh were sealed on orders of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Exactly. It's national security everywhere. Gentlemen, great job. Look forward to talking to you again. And interviewing some of the people that are uh, in your uh, film, amazing job, available at InfoWars.com. People got to get this video out to everybody. Look forward to talking to you soon. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, folks, that is it for this split edition of InfoWars Nightly News with Mike Adams in the first half, and I came in in the second half. Great job to the crew. God willing, we'll see you back Sunday live on the radio, 4 to 6 p.m., and back Monday on the radio show and then the nighttime show. Why do we work so hard? Because we know terrorists are running the government and nobody's safe. It's like that old analogy of the old 40s you know, adventure movies where the, where the explorer, the archaeologist, kind of the remake of Indiana Jones is in the, in the temple and the ceiling's coming down to kill you with spikes. You've got to find the lever to stop it or get out of there. I mean, it's not like, God, you're brave. You're trying to get out of this. Brave? No, I'm not brave. I realize our society has no future. I guess I'm brave that I'm not a coward who only thinks about myself, and if I grovel, maybe I'll get a few more years out of this. There's no point even going forward if we don't beat these people. You think they stop blowing up federal buildings? They're putting stuff in the water, the food they've been caught. It's all public, the vaccines, the Rockefeller Foundation. We've shown it to you. All you've got to do is flip the switch and stop being naive. The film's a noble lie available at InfoWars.com. And they could kill all of us, but this information will live on, and that's what's important. Expose false flag terror. Expose the New World Order. Order the film. Give the gift of truth. Order it by Sunday night. Guaranteed before Christmas delivery under that Tannenbaum to wake somebody up. Give the gift of truth. Expose the false flag because they're getting ready to stage more and blame it on domestic groups. They'll flip the whole Al-Qaeda brainwashing onto domestics. You already see the beta testing, the preconditioning. It's here. All right, I'm Alex Jones signing off from the front lines of the Info War.